Good afternoon, uh, guys. It's Tuesday, and I'm going to record now the lesson for uh, tomorrow. I guess it will be for Thursday and Friday because the one that I uploaded yesterday, it was for today and for tomorrow, which is um, solving quadratic and linear systems using substitution, okay? You're supposed to be working on that today and tomorrow. So tomorrow, Wednesday, you're supposed to be submitting your homework for Thursday. Now, this lesson is gonna be for Wednesday and Friday. Okay, I'm sorry, Thursday and Friday. Now we're gonna do systems of quadratic and linear equations using elimination, okay? Remember, this lesson you can have, you're gonna have two days to work on it. It will be Thursday and Friday. So I expect your homework to be handed in on Monday. So you have actually like the whole week to do uh, this homework. I mean, you know, you have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So let's begin. The topic today is solving quadratic and linear system using elimination. Remember, we already did elimination also with two lines. Remember, we did system or linear equations, all right? Now we're gonna do systems with a quadratic and a linear. But before we're going to, you know, like refresh our mind. Remember, as I do now here, I have you to solve this system of equations. They both lines, okay? There's no uh, quadratic there. So I'm asking you to solve for x. Listen, I'm being very specific. Solve for x. Even though it is easier to eliminate the x's here, your best shot will be eliminate the y's, okay? Because if you're looking for the value of x, you better off eliminating y's. So your answer should be already x. Now, but if you do the other way, if you eliminate x, you're gonna find y. Then you have to substitute to find the value of x. So this one is still gonna work, do like you know, a little work, but let's just refresh our minds. Remember, these are the two original equations, x plus three, y equals nine, four x plus five, y equals 22. Remember, they have to be in a standard form, all right? Uh, with the, uh, what, the, what we're going to do later, they have to be in standard form, but because they're different, I'm going to show you, I'm going to lead you through the process. But this is what we did, you know, like a few weeks ago. So, because I want to solve for x, I want to eliminate the y's. Now, remember the y's, okay, and I give you all the information here, just to refresh your mind. You have to multiply the equations, okay, in order that they both have the same value the coefficient, okay, have the same value, but with opposite signs. So we need to have the same numbers with different signs. So we can eliminate that variable, and when we find the value of that variable, we're gonna substitute it on the, one of the other equations to find the other variable. You will remember that as we go, as we go along. So look, so here, I wanna eliminate the y's because I'm looking for x. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply, remember guys, the top times five and the bottom times three. And I have to make sure one of them is negative because they both have same signs. So I made the bottom one negative. You can do the top negative and this positive, it won't make any difference. You're still going to get the same answer. So you have to distribute twice. So when I distribute five with X, three Y and nine, I get five X plus 15 Y equals 45. I do the same thing on my second equation. I'm going to multiply negative 3 with all the terms inside the parentheses, okay? So I will get negative 12x minus 15y equals negative 66. Now that I have my two new equations, I can see that I can eliminate my y's, but that would be purpose, okay? Eliminate y so I can find my x. So when I combine these two, five minus 12 will give you negative seven X and 45 minus 66 will give you negative 21. We divide by negative seven. So X equals positive three, okay? So that's my answer. I don't have to do anything else because 
and been asked to find the value of x. Now, if I were to ask you to find the solution of this system, then now you have to find the value of y. You have to plug in x in either one of the four equations and find y, but that's not what's being asked. Okay, so that was only to refresh your mind. Remember, if I were to ask you to eliminate y, to find the value of y, then you would eliminate the x's. That would be a lot easier because you have to multiply the top one by negative four, right? So you could, you could have eliminated the x's, but that wasn't the case. So I already refresh your mind, okay? I don't have to find y because I not ask you to find y. So let's just jump into the topic that we're doing today. So now we're gonna solve a system of quadratic and linear systems, okay? Using elimination, not substitution. So remember, the main goal here, guys, is to eliminate one of the variables. And you know, as, as always, lead you through the process, right? So problem number one, I'm giving you already the equations. X squared minus Y equals 15, and X plus Y equals 15. Remember, this is the quadratic, okay? And this is the line, okay, linear. So, if you see here, they both are, well, the quadratic is not in standard form, but you know, they both have the same format. So I can automatically see that I can eliminate my y's, okay, because they have different signs. So I will have, listen, now I cannot add these two because that's square and this is that. So I'm gonna write in separate. I'm gonna write x squared plus this x, equals 15 plus 15 is 30, all right? Then what about that side now? Follow my, okay, my guides right here. Now, what I do is, because it's a quadratic, I have to put it equal to zero. So the 30 has to come to the other side and that becomes negative, right? So I will write x squared plus x minus 30 equals zero. I think I'm becoming more and more familiar with this method. See, as you can see, I'm going slower and I'm taking my time, all right? So I'm getting practice. So now, when I have my quadratic in standard form, I'll do regular factorization because in this case, I can do it, all right? Sometimes you cannot, so you'll see down what I'm talking about and another problem. So, um, because the last one is negative, right? We need different signs. So I have a plus and a minus. And two factors of 30 that when I subtract and will give me one will be six and five. And the larger number take the middle sign term. So six has to be positive because six minus five will give me positive one. And six times negative five will give me negative 30. Then I will do my, find my roots, right? I'll say, you know, all my values of x. Don't get confused, guys, because remember, because this is a parabola, I call them roots, okay, roots. But we actually not looking for roots, we're looking for uh, solutions, okay, of the system. But in this case, I will call them root because this is a parabola and that will be the root of that uh, equation. Now, x plus 6 equals 0, so I do minus 6, minus 6. So my first value of x is negative 6, okay? x minus 5 equals 0, plus 5, plus 5. So my second value of x is 5. I want to stay away from calling them roots, you know, because I usually call them roots. We usually use roots when it's only a parabola. But if that would be just a problem, just one equation, and I ask you to solve, that would be the roots of that parabola. But remember, we're finding for the solution of the set of the quadratic and linear. Now that we have the value of x, the same thing we did yesterday with substitution, okay? We're going to use those values of x to find the values of y. So what I'm doing is, I'm going to write here my value of x. My first one is negative 6 and my second one is 5. Now I have to find the partner of each value of x. Okay, so to find y, I told you yesterday or two days ago, use the line, which is easier. So in this case, the line, all right, is x plus y equals 15. And you don't have to solve, okay? Just make sure you just copy the way it is and just substitute. So x plus y equals 15, all right? That's my equation. So what I do now, I'm going to substitute x for negative six, and I'm gonna solve for y. So now I'll do plus six, plus six, so y becomes 21. So my first solution 
is negative 6 comma 21 okay and now we'll go with the next one same thing remember guys i'm using the same equation x plus y equals 15 so this x becomes 5 plus y equals 15 now i'm going to do minus 5 minus 5 so y equals 10 okay then i have my other solution which is 5 comma 10. this is the same thing that we did yesterday but today we're using substitution okay i mean so i'm sorry elimination now remember guys i always have you um checking okay that those two solutions work so we're going to do that only in this problem we're not going to do it on the next one and we're not going to do it in the homework okay so let's go and check so i'm going to use these two points okay six comma 21 and five comma 10 and if you turn to the page i already have them there for you okay so negative six comma 21 that was my first solution and five comma 10 that was my second solution remember this is x that's y this is x that's y and i'm going to do that in both equations so i choose the parabolas here right first so this x becomes negative six so whatever you see in x you have to write negative six so negative six square minus y which is 21 to be equals to 15 all right now negative six squared is 36 minus 21 equals 15 and 36 minus 21 is 15 and 15 equals 15 so that works so before i go to the other one let's do this one now we're going to do the line all right same thing x plus y equals 15 so x is negative 6 from here sorry plus 21 which is y from here equals 15 and i solve negative 6 plus 21 is 15 and 15 equals 15 so there it works also i'm going to do exactly the same thing with the next one okay so this x becomes 5 and because it's positive i don't have to put i don't have to put in parentheses okay minus 10 equals 15. so 5 squared is 25 minus 10 equals 15 and 25 minus 10 is 15 and 15 equals 15 so that works so let's do it also with the line okay x is 5 remember that comes from that point right there plus 10 which is y equals 15 and 10 plus 5 is 15 and 15 equals 15 so that works remember that's just checking it's something that i always tell you in class when you go to um, a different math class you know like upper level math teacher you know probably gonna ask you to check right your answers and you have to do it because sometimes uh there are solutions that doesn't work okay maybe just one works the other one doesn't work so you have to be careful you have to start getting used to checking now let's go with the second problem now the second problem okay just analyze okay remember when we use elimination we think we're talking about eliminating and we have to eliminate one of the variables could be x or could be y so look this one is in the form that the other uh, the original problem was you know for problem number one which written in this form but problem number two it wasn't written written like that i mean like the quadratic equation so what i suggest you to do guys remember you can eliminate the x you can eliminate the y's so if you notice these two y's right here they already have different signs so what i recommend you to do is move the x to that side so you can have your y okay with negative so look this is what i did okay i'm leading you through because i know that they negative and that's positive so if i move this 7 to this side x i definitely going to have my way along and that's what i want okay so i can eliminate my y's so remember um you can eliminate the x because you have two x's here so in this case what you have to eliminate is the y you have no other options okay so i wrote here solve for y okay to 
eliminate them. Okay? So, what I did is I copied the equation. So, you know, I'm leading you step through step. Don't pay attention to anything else on the, sur on the surroundings, right? Just follow me. So, I copy the equation 7x minus y equals 10, right? And look, I'm doing the process minus 7x minus 7x. I don't have to, you can just, just move it to the other side, but I'm doing it because some kids need to visualize everything. So, my 7 eliminate and I have negative y equals negative 7 plus 10. Okay, remember, I don't have to divide by negative 1, okay? Because I want this variable to be negative, so I can eliminate it with the other one, all right? Uh, so what I do is then I'm going to bring this one that I solved, I'm going to light them up below this one, okay? Now that I have solved this for, for negative y, I'm going to bring this because that now becomes that, okay? Remember, this becomes that. So I'm going to rewrite this below my quadratic function so I can eliminate, okay? So I'm writing negative y equals, remember, there's no x squared here. So I'm going to leave that space. So now negative 7x should go below positive 3x because the family and plus 10 should be below negative 10, all right? So now we're going to solve. This is exactly what I want y minus 1 is 0 and I have just bring this down x squared 3 minus 7 is negative 4x and the 10 cancels out too so look I'm ending having a um, how do you say a incomplete quadratic but remember because I have the linear okay term I cannot use square root method so I have to use GCF, which is x. What does that mean? That I have to divide each term by x. So I will have left x outside, parentheses x minus 4. Now I do my t chart, right? Don't pay attention to that. Remember, guys, concentrate. Stay with me here. Follow my. So my first value of x is going to be 0. You can call it root, right? It doesn't matter because it's root for that parabola. Um, and my next one, I have to put it equal to zero, then I have to solve, okay? So now I have my two values of x, zero and four. What am I going to do now? Find the value of y, okay? So I'm going to follow my arrow, okay? And just, okay, after you can see, I wrote here, find y. What did I always tell you? Use the line, right? Okay. First, I'm going to use when x is 0. Then I'm going to use when x is positive 4. So look, I'm going to use my linear equation, which is this one right here, okay? I'm going to use that for both so I can find my value of y. So I will copy the equation, negative y equals negative 7x plus 10. I'm going to do it twice because I have to do it there too. Okay, and now I'm going to start solving. I'm going to keep my negative y equals negative 7 times x, which is 0. That's going to be easy because negative 7 times 0 is 0. And if I add 10, I will get negative y equals 10. Remember, guys, don't leave the negative, okay? Because if you leave the negative out, you're going to think that the solution is 10, and it's not. It's actually negative 10, right? So y equals negative 10. So that means that when x is 0, that's my first solution here, y is negative 10. Let's find the next one, okay? When x equals 4, don't forget the minus, minus y equals negative 7 times 4 plus 10. You keep your negative y equals negative 7 times 4 is negative 28 plus 10. Negative y equals negative 28 plus 10 is going to give you negative 18. And you must divide by negative 1. So y equals positive 18. So you the solution should be 4 comma 18. 
if you leave the negative um, behind, you should, you're going to have two negative answers here. And if you plug that back into the equation, it's not going to work if you want to check. So remember, be careful with the signs, okay? So this is your solutions right here. That means the parabola and the line will cross each other um, on those two points. All right? So let's go back to the uh, back of the uh, paper so we can do the next three problems, right? I'm going to slow. I'm going as much as, as slow as I can, okay? So let's turn. Let me turn it over here because I don't want to. I don't want to drop the phone like I did the other day. So let's start from the very beginning, okay? Like I said before, concentrate on what I'm doing, line what is around the problem, okay? Because we're gonna go through those. Let's start from the beginning. Now here I have my quadratic, which is y equals negative x squared minus four x plus one. And on the bottom I have y equals two x plus 10. Remember, most likely you're gonna eliminate the y's because you cannot eliminate the x's because you have two different terms of x. You have x squared and four x. So you can eliminate two at the same time. So here, what you have to look at is, is to eliminate the variable that appear once in each equation. And in this case, it's the y. So I can eliminate this by making one of these negative, right? So I'm gonna do the bottom. I'm gonna multiply the bottom by negative one so I can eliminate my y's. I can do that with the top two, but then, you know, I have more terms to distribute. So I always take the easiest way. So when I distribute that, look what I got. I get, uh, I'm gonna bring down that one because I'm gonna do it as slowly and detailing that I can. Okay, so I just brought that down. I didn't do anything, okay? Just rewrote it, that's all. Because the one that's going to change is this one. So when I do that one, look what I got. Okay, I get negative y equals, remember, the x squared, there's no x squared here, so I'm going to skip that. So because if I put this below here, I make a mistake and add the wrong uh, terms, all right? So negative 1 times 2x become negative 2x, and I'm going to light it below 4x because those are the ones that are like terms. Same thing with the 10. Negative 1 times 10 is negative 10, and it goes below the 1. You know, like I say, you know, you got to match every term. So y minus y is 0. Now I'm gonna bring down my negative x squared because there's no family. And when I add these two, I get negative six x minus nine. Remember, to factor, this is difficult. The first thing you have to do is just try to see if you can factor, you know, like using um, regular factorization. So you're gonna divide this by negative one, okay? And if you notice, that becomes x squared plus six x plus nine, and that can be factored. But if by any chance you can factor this, which is gonna be the next problem, you have to use either complete the square or the quadratic formula. But this one, it works because this is a perfect square trinomial. Remember, a perfect square trinomial, the last term is always positive. So if I do my double bubble, okay, because that's positive, they both take the middle sign term, so they're both gonna be pluses. And it's easy because this is a perfect square trinomial, I know that it will be three and three. 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 plus 3 is 6. So now I have to find my values of x, or roots, whatever, you know? So you do your t-chart, right? So I just continue here. I think so far we're doing good. And I'm gonna find my values of y. But look, look what happened. Because this is a perfect square trinomial, I'm gonna have one real root, I mean one rational root on real too, right? because it's a double root. So if I do minus three, minus three, x equals negative three. Same thing here, negative three, negative three, x equals negative three. So in this case, because it's a double root, that they're gonna intersect only at one point. So to find y, you only have to do it once, you don't have to do it twice, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna use the line, you know, to find y, I'm gonna use my line, the original, because here, y is already isolated, right? So you can see that my y here is already alone, so I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna write it once, because I'm gonna to have to do it once. Okay, this is the linear, remember. So I'm gonna write my equation, y equals 
2x plus 10, and I'm going to substitute my x for negative 3. And if I solve, I will get y equals negative 6, because 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 plus 10, so my value of y is 4. So this is my solution. Like I say, this one only have one solution because um, it's a double root. So those are the parabola and the line cross each other at that point only. All right, that wasn't bad. So now we're gonna go to the fourth one, which is a little more tricky, okay? Because it's gonna be something like that, but you're not gonna be able to uh, factor, you know, use a regular factorization. So let's see what I'm talking about. So now look. The original problem, I have 2y equals x minus 10, and on the bottom I have y equals x squared plus 2x minus 15. Obviously, okay, you have 2y here, so you have to make sure this one becomes 2 also and negative. So what we do is we're going to multiply the bottom one, okay, this one, times negative 2. All right? And look what I got, okay? I get negative two y equals, okay, negative two x squared minus four x plus 30, all right? And I'm gonna bring down the other one, okay? Now, so now I'm gonna bring this down. Remember, I'm going to try to light them up in order, okay? So that becomes 2y, which is what I want because I'm going to cancel now. Remember, the x doesn't belong here because of the x squared, so it belongs here. So I'm going to put x here and the 10 also belongs there. So look what happened. It's going to be a nice one. So they're going to be 0 equals, I'm going to get negative 2x squared minus 3x plus 20. I know that, you know, you cannot divide by 2 here, right, by negative 2, because the 3 is not divisible by negative 2, right? Oh, uh, uh, just 3 is not divide, divisible by 2. You get a decimal. So, um, the only reason, the only way you can do here is using completing the square, which I don't think I recommend that, because still, you know, this one is not 1. So, here you have to use quadratic formula automatically, okay? because this one is negative and it's not one. If that would have been negative one, maybe you would have done the same thing that we did up here, but not in this situation. So what I suggest you to do here, use the quadratic formula. Remember guys, the quadratic formula works for anything, for any type of quadratic. It can be a regular quadratic or it can be any complete quadratic and it will work. Quadratic formula works for everything. So um, I wrote the equation here. Actually, I didn't write it because I assume you will remember, but my equation goes as this, x equals minus from the formula, okay, parenthesis negative 3, which is my value of b, plus minus radical, inside the radical negative 3, I actually put it square because remember, it's negative, minus 4, which is part of the formula, times a, which is negative 2, times c, which is positive 20. All right, everything divided by two comma negative two because a here is negative two, all right? So here comes, here we go again with my arrows, all right? From here, we continue there and we'll do x equals three because that becomes positive, minus times minus is plus, plus minus, 9 because negative 3 squared is positive 9. If I multiply these three numbers, I get positive 160. Everything divided by negative 4. I feel pretty good about this lesson. I think I'm doing a good job. I think I'm going very slow and you guys are going to get it. So x equals 3 plus minus. When I add those two, I get radical 169. And this one, remember that the discriminant guy, okay, is a perfect square. Okay, 
So that's a perfect square. So that means I'm going to have two rational roots. So divided by negative 4. So remember, x equals 3 plus minus because that's a perfect square and the square root of 169 is 13 divided by negative 4. All right? So look, now because I have to separate them, I'm going to have 3 plus 13. I'm going to use the positive first divided by negative 4. And that will give me 3 plus 13 is 16 divided by negative 4. I get negative 4. Same thing with the other one. 3 minus 13 divided by negative 4. That will give me negative 10 divided by negative 4. And then if I simplify that, that I get positive uh, 5 over 2 or 2.5. It's the same thing. All right? So sometimes it's easier to use the decimal, okay, guys? All right, so let's now solve for the values of y because I know I have my first x, which is negative 4, and my x, which is 5 health, or 2.5. So let's use, what are we going to use? The line, okay? And the line is the one up here. So let's use the line. Use to y equals x minus 10. All right. I'm going to use first using my negative 4. So 2y equals negative 4 minus 10, right? So that will give me 2y equals negative 14. And if I divide by 2, y equals negative 7. So my first solution is negative 4 comma negative 7. I'll do exactly the same thing with the other one. I'm going to use the decimal because decimal is easier. 2y equals 2.5 minus 10. Remember, it's the same thing because you can have as a fraction as a decimal. So that leads me to 2y equals negative 7.5. And if I divide by 2, y is negative 3.75. So your second solution should be 2.5 times negative 3.75. They might give you that, okay guys, they might give you that as a fraction also. Remember, this is 5 health and I believe that's 15 over 4. If you put that 3.75 math enter enter, you will get uh, 15 over 4. Alright? So that take care of problem number 4. So I hope so far you're doing fine, okay? So there is the whole problem. So remember, you can just post guide the, uh, guys, uh, the video and copy everything. So now let's go with number four. I mean number five. So let me just fold the page paper, okay? Number five. Number five, I have y squared equals 4x. And have x minus y equals negative 4, okay? That's my, my two equations. Now look, this one reminds me to the one from the beginning. Remember when I give you all the equations in this form? So remember here, guys. Here, I have to eliminate the x's. Because if you notice, I don't have now the one that appears twice is the y. Because I have the y squared and the y, okay? y squared and y. I cannot eliminate this because I will end up having a mess. Okay, so you always eliminate the one that appears once. Like, you know, like, uh, what, what am I saying? Um, like, yeah, like x that appears one because the only one that I like term are these two. So you're going to concentrate on those two. So I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate x. So what I'm going to do is, since already this one is in that form, I'm going to bring the 4x to the side and I can actually write it this way because the x go with the x so this one becomes negative 4x okay because it's traveling plus okay because the y square is already in that side y square equals zero right 
The only thing I did, I moved this to this side. Now, in order for me to eliminate the excess, I have to make sure I have to convert this one to four, right? So what I'm going to do then now, remember guys, it's a little tricky. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to multiply this one times negative four, all right? I'm multiplying this equation. Now, the first thing I did, I moved this one to this side so I can put it in the same order as that. Now they have to have the same uh, coefficient so I can eliminate this. So if I multiply this times four, remember guys, because um, I want that to become negative, right? So if I multiply it times negative four, I will get four uh, x, what am I doing? I'm sorry guys, this is this one. So this one is four. Okay, what I did is I brought this one down Okay, I brought this one down, okay, and now I'm going to multiply it times 4. I'm sorry, guys, I made a mistake. So, disregard this, all right? What I brought then, since I already moved to this, moved this one to this side, I brought the other one down, okay? So now I'm going to convert this to negative to 4 because I want to cancel the x. So that becomes 4x minus uh, 4y, okay, equals negative 16 okay I multiplied this one so now that this one becomes that I can definitely disregard this one all right and I can eliminate my 4x with my 4x what we have left I will have left my y square minus 4y equals negative 16 because 0 minus 16 is negative 16 I know this is confusing right now look you're going to try to solve using double bubble, right? Set a parenthesis or regular factorization. So you have to move the 16 to this side. So that will become positive. You have y squared minus 4y plus 16 equals 0. What's going to happen? You're going to try to factor that and you're not going to be able to do it because it's impossible to find, remember, because that's positive, it's impossible to find two numbers that when you multiply them will give you 16 and when you add them will give you four because remember when this one is positive they both take the middle turn sign so it's not going to work because four times four is 16 four plus four is eight eight times two is 16 eight times eight plus two is 10 16 times one is 16 and 16 plus one is 17 is not going to work so your other option is quadratic formula okay although you can use completing the square why because completing the square you already have, um, you have, um, this is the value of one, okay? So, but let's use the quadratic formula because it's easier. Because this one, remember, can not be factor, okay? So I'm not telling you to use quadratic formula. Okay, a quadratic formula, oh, this time I wrote the formula for you there. I know my value of A is one, my value of B is negative four, and my value of C is 16. I got it from here, A, B, and C. So, because I already wrote the formula for you there, and I'm gonna waste any time going over that, I'm just gonna substitute. X equals minus from the formula, okay? Remember this is minus, I don't know what I put plus, it's minus. Um, because B is negative four in parentheses, plus minus negative four, which is the value of B, and because it's negative in parentheses, minus four times one times 16. Everything divided by two times one. I don't think I give you anything like this on the homework, so I hope I didn't. So the four becomes positive, plus minus, negative 4 squared is 16 minus 72 when you multiply negative 4 times 1 times 16 it will give you negative 72 divided by 2 but look when i simplify this okay i get x equals 4 plus minus negative 48 divided by 2 remember guys okay this is the discriminant 
Remember when we do the nature of the roots? So when we have negative discriminant, what happens? What happens is the roots are not real. So in this case, I don't have to do anything else because there will be no real solutions. Okay? Discriminant equals negative 48. So it's going to be two imaginary roots. Two imaginary roots that they will never ever cross the x-axis. So every time you have a negative discriminant, there's no real solutions. Okay? They are called imaginary and they also never cross the x-axis. So there is a, a little snapshot of what that is. But shoot, this is going to be a long, long, long video. Okay, in one more, the last one. I think I give you one of these on the homework, yes, with the fraction. So here, the thing, the, what you have to do is, look, you have them both now equal. Um, I'm sorry, you have them, no, this one is already y equal, but not this one. So what I'm asking you to do is to solve for y, because remember here, you have x and x squared, so you cannot combine these two because you're still going to have that left. Remember, the idea is to eliminate the one that appears on the ones. In this case, y's and y's, they just do the first power. So what we have to do here is eliminate the y's. So I'm going to solve this one for y. So that means that the x has to travel, all right? So that will come to y equal because it's negative, becomes x plus 0, all right? Now, know what I'm going to do. Now, because I want to cancel this with that, all right, I'm going to multiply this y times negative 2, so I can cancel my two y's, okay? If you remember, that's a 2y, so what I'm going to do is multiply this one now times negative 2. So I'm going to draw the whole thing down here so I don't, I don't get mixed up. So what I'm doing is I'm copying that, and I'm going to multiply times negative 2. I'm doing one step at a time, guys, okay? I'm taking my time. So now look, when I distribute, I will get negative 2y equals, and when I do 2 times 1 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. And because it's minus times minus, that becomes positive. Negative 2 times 3 will give me negative 6. And I keep that x. So now that I have both, in the form that I can cancel, I'm going to bring this one and write it below this one. Okay, I'm going to copy this one and write it below here. So let me just do my, let me just do my tricks. So that becomes 2y equals, because there's no x squared here, just x, I'm going to leave the space here, I'm going to line up the x below the negative 6x. I can't forget about the 0 because the 0, it doesn't do anything. So negative 2y plus 2y is 0, and I've been down my x squared, and this is my 5x. Again, this is an incomplete quadratic, but I can solve using the square root method because I only do that when I don't have the linear, right? When I have the square and the constant, or just x squared equals to a number. So I'm going to use the GCF, okay, which is x. So that means I divide everything by x, and I get x parenthesis x minus 5. I mean, you know this. T sharp, so my first value of x is going to be 0. And when I do x minus 5 equal to 0, I'll do plus 5, so my other value of x is 5. So now I have my two values of x, okay? So I'm going to write them here. x equals 0, that comes from here, and x equals 5. What am I doing that? Because now I have to find the value of y, okay? So to have the value of y, use the line. And I'm going to use this one. Although the y is not alone, it had the 2 in the front, it doesn't matter. You can still work. We did that before. So I'm going to copy my line, which is 2y equals s. Don't worry about the zero. It's not going to help you. And I'm going to do the same thing here. So now I'm going to substitute my x for those values. So 2y equals 0. And if I divide by 2, y equals 0. So my first solution is 0 comma zero, that means that that goes through the origin. And the other one right here should be 2y equals five, and if I divide by two, I get equals five halves, or 2.5. So your solution could be five comma five over two, or five comma 
2.5. Okay, that is problem number four. And I guess that concludes the lesson. I know it's a little confusing, okay, but guys, you do the best you can. Remember, you have two days. This is the lesson for Thursday and Friday, okay? And the homework from this one is not going to be due until Monday, the following Monday, which I think is going to be two, five, 7th, the 7th, I think, because today is 1st, tomorrow, uh, no, I think it's going to be the 6th, but it's due Monday, okay, guys? Uh, stay well and have a good day. Bye.